Hello everybody, it's Mr. Tall23 back in our video. In this video, based on a request that I got from somebody in my comments a few weeks ago, I'm going to be rebuking and refuting the false doctrines of a false teacher named Wayne Levi Price, who has several YouTube channels, one of them being Wayne Levi Price Tribulation Saints, and another one is Wayne Levi Price Beware Something. But he has several thousand followers on YouTube, I'm not sure exactly how many he has because one of his channels does not show the number of subscribers. The other one has like 4,000. Now, I didn't know that much about Wayne Levi Price uh, until just a few months ago. I remember seeing his videos a long time ago, back in 2015 and 2016, uh, before I got saved, before I was even in the false Hebrew roots movement, and before I even started making videos about the Bible on YouTube. In fact, I mostly forgot about his channel and this man in general uh, until this person, I think it was Lionheart777, who's a subscri subscriber to my channel, he reminded me of this person, and I went and watched a few videos, and it didn't take me long to figure out that this guy is a fraud and a dangerous heretic. Dangerous in the sense that he's deceiving thousands of people to believe a false gospel. And you can see that just in the comments that a lot of people are supporting him. Uh, people are saying, uh, you know, great video, brother, this is the truth, and things like that, when he's actually teaching a lie. And like so many others on YouTube, he teaches the false gospel of repenting of your sins, that you actually need to turn away from your sin and obey God in order to get saved, and that if you don't, uh, you'll go to hell. That's what he teaches. Now, this video is mainly focusing on Wayne Levi Price, but I want to start off by calling out other people who teach the same concept, and uh, those include channels like Service Christi and Colin Michaels of One Reality, who I think I'll make a, a separate video about sometime in the future. Uh, and most street preachers as well, like Gabe the Street Preacher, among others. And you can see some of these channels where they just upload videos of them preaching and teaching and, and ex trying to explain the Bible, but they're not saved, so they can't really explain it very well. And they're teaching a false gospel. We need to call out these liars for preaching a false works-based salvation. That's what this video is for, calling out this person, Wayne Levi Price. Now, first, let's establish that Wayne Levi Price, or what he has what Wayne Levi Price has said concerning his belief on salvation. And I'm going to show you a few clips from him. Uh, as I did in the Daniel John Lee video, I'm just going to play like the thing and hold up the microphone so you can hear him speak. And uh, I'm going to play all of them consecutively. So I'm going to play them first and then show from the Bible that his claims are false. So this is the first video. This video is called Falling Away From God Again and Again. And it was a testimony about how God saved me from my sins and changed me and I was born again and how to be set free from my old ways. When I started writing it, I had received this power and feeling and relationship and taste of God that just put me on the right course with high energy and enthusiasm and just magnificent presence and anointing of God in my life. I said, man, I got to... I gotta so the key phrase, uh, the key thing that you need to pay attention to that he states here is that he, he says he's been changed or he's been transformed from his old ways and set on the right path, that kind of thing. Uh, so the next video is, he calls it, How to Believe in Jesus, uh, Blind Faith. So, uh, on the right spot. Ask this with me for a moment, please, bear with me. People are not being taught how to believe. They're simply being told to believe. But they're not being taught what that means or what that looks like or how to go about doing it the right way. There is a right way to believe and a wrong way to believe. You can't just say you believe or think you believe. You can't just tell people to believe. The true gospel is a message of transformation by believing. And if they're not believing properly, there is no transformation. And that's why people are still stuck in sin, promoting sin, protecting and justifying their sin. They actually protect their right to sin as if that's a transforming power of the gospel message of Jesus Christ. People will argue over whether faith comes before works or whether the work of repenting is part of faith and they'll argue over how you say potato potato they argue over these things it's all semantics it's all academic it doesn't even matter what matters is are you believing properly so we teach people how to believe we don't just go around telling people to believe in jesus 
because people are confused and the doctrines of devils have a firm root to believe churches today and they have a deep penetrating grip on the pulpit and they are seriously manipulating the very simple principle of believing in the name of Jesus so and then uh so there's that part and then later in the video it says this because somebody comes along and says well if you, if you have the right kind of faith you're going to have the works that is absolutely true faith and fruit and effort and repentance all comes because you believe properly but what we tell people is if you don't have this evidence repenting seeking holiness striving to obey jesus the works the effort the labor if you don't have that if you don't have those things then you just simply do not believe and people say they believe and they try to negate the fact that these works are evidence that justify your faith whether your faith is true or not abraham his faith was justified because he went and offered his son on the altar and a, all the way down to abel and, and all the the saints that believed were justified because they did the work of believing so whatever that means uh, so the next video it's uh, called Bible Study with Levi. Works of Faith versus Dead Works. Bless you. Today I want you to learn with me what the difference is between primary works of faithfulness, which are necessary to be counted worthy, which are necessary to have real faith, the kind of justification that proves you have the right kind of faith. There's a primary, essential, crucial, and critical, mandatory type of love and holiness in Christ that we can only get through being in His Spirit, being born of God, this initial work of transformation. There's something that has to be done in the heart of a man through faithfully applying the Word of God and being transformed and changed. And that is, to me, that is called the primary work of faith. I want you to know the difference between that and the works that are secondary which are the fruits, extended fruits, that go beyond the call of duty. The extra mile works, if you will. This next video is uh, titled, Can We Lose Our Salvation? The Truth. I'll, I'll just give you a hint right now, it's not the truth. Uh, but I'll get to that. This is, again, just showing you exactly what he believes from his own words. So can a man lose his salvation? The question is, were you saved? If a man holds on to Jesus and his teachings all the way to the end, he cannot lose his salvation, but it's only at the end that will be determined whether a man is saved or not. Then uh, he also adds text on the on the screen as well. You will be judged at the end of your life. If you hold on until the end, your salvation is secure. I believe in eternal security if you're obeying Jesus. Are you obeying Jesus? It says on the you must do the will of God, and then you know that if you hold on until the end, you will be saved. And then the final video. This one, he says that you have to stop sinning in order to be saved. Uh, People are accusing me of saying that you have to be perfect in your deeds here on earth in order to get into heaven. I've never said that. I never claimed that. But I do teach the doctrine of Christ that says stop sinning. Stop sinning or you're going to hell. Stop sinning or you're going to hell. Faith begins by believing that this is his writing. Jesus said, stop sinning or you're going to hell. That's what he says. So did Paul, apparently. And then he gives some, some supposed scripture which try to prove it, and I'll People go into that later. People are accusing me of saying that you have to be perfect in your deeds here on earth in order to get into heaven. I've never said that. I never claimed that. But I do teach the doctrine of Christ that says, stop sinning. 
Stop sinning or you're going to hell. It says God wants us to stop sinning. But he knows we will make mistakes. If I Do I think somebody's going to go to hell if they said a cuss word today? That's in God's hands. I honestly don't know whether you're saved or not. I'm not saying that one mistake or rarely sinning is going to send anybody to hell. I've never said that. And I would never teach that. Am I perfect yet? No. Am I perfect yet? No. Am I perfect yet? No. I make mistakes as I pursue perfection, but I repent of my sins. If we are not seeking perfection, we are not living by faith. We must repent and believe or we will go to hell. So that's what Wayne Levi Price believes. And this is not the last video for today. I'll have, there's another video at the end, near the end of this video. Uh, but we can see basically what he teaches. And is any of this true? No, it's not. Absolutely not. None of this is true. All of this is just nonsense. And the Bible summarizes the gospel in a completely different way. Uh, we see in two passages, which I'd like to read from. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 12 to 14, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted. After that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession under, or unto the praise of his glory. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 11, it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve, after that he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles, and last of all he is seen of me also as of one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, that am not me to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God but by the grace of God I am what I am and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain but I labored more abundantly than they all not yet not I but the grace of God which is with me therefore whether it were I or they so we preach and so ye believe so the gospel is the death burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ it's all about him and his finished work on the cross not about any of our works not about anything that we try to do it says in Ephesians that we are sealed by the Holy Spirit because we believed in the gospel of our salvation and we trusted in Christ. Trusted. Okay, that's a key word. It's a synonym for believe. believe has, believing has nothing to do with your works, as Wayne Levi Price is trying to say. So, I don't understand why he's coming at us with this nonsensical garbage about, believe, about the, saying that believing is synonymous with repenting of your sins and having a transformative work in your life. Now, the question is, is the proper way to believe, as Levi Price teaches in his uh, How to Believe in Jesus video, to also carry out works? No, because the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So how can it say in one place, we're saved by grace through faith, and then it's not of works, if works are intermingled with faith, if they're the same thing? How does that make any sense? It also says in Titus chapter 3, verse 4 to 7, but after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Okay, again, not by works of righteousness which we have done. It's by grace. It's by the kindness and the unmerited favor from God. And just so you know, the Bible shows us that grace is completely separate from works, not only in this passage, but in other passages as well, and that attempting to justify yourself by works removes the grace of God. It says in Romans chapter 11, verse 6, And if by grace, then it is no more of works, otherwise grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace, otherwise work is no more work. Furthermore, Price made the claim that if you believe, a result will always be that you have good works to coincide with it. However, the Bible refutes this as well, as it says in Romans chapter 4, verse 5 to 6, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. So how can you say, well, if you have the right kind of faith, you're going to have the works, which is what Wayne Levi Price said, when Paul clearly states that faith is counted for righteousness to him that worketh not. 
someone who doesn't work, but they still have their faith count for righteousness. And then David describes the blessedness of the man to whom God imputes righteousness without works. Again, it's a some person without works, and yet they're still being justified. Works are completely separate from faith. They're completely separate from grace. And by the way, repenting of your sin or turning away from the sin in your life is a work in God's eyes. So it's something that you don't need to do in order to be saved. The Bible says in Jonah chapter 3, verse 10, And God saw their works that they turned from their evil way, and God repented of the evil. Okay, this is also something you need to pay attention to, that God repents. It says God repented of the evil. So every time the word repent appears in the Bible, it doesn't mean that you have to turn away from your sin. That's not the only definition of repent. And God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them, and he did it not. To summarize how we are saved, the Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 28, Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Your righteousness does not matter. Stopping your sin, uh, repenting of your sin, which is defined in, by the way, sin is defined in uh, 1 John 3, 4 as transgression of the law. Doing that is doing a deed of the law because you're obeying the law by stopping your sin, right? Because sin, by definition, is a transgression of the law. So if you're stopping doing that, you're obeying the law, you're doing a deed of the law. That is not how we're justified according to Romans 3, 28, according to the Bible. So how are we saved then? What is belief? Well, belief is exactly what you'd expect belief to be. I mean, there's no secret, no connotative definition of belief. Belief means belief. It's simply trusting Christ, believing that he has died for you, and that he will save you from hell. That is what belief is. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 to 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from, his dead, from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So notice how Paul leaves out doing any good works or repenting of your sin in this passage, but rather he shows us that it's only something which we must do on the inside, in our heart. It's belief. Now let's see what Jesus said. He said in John chapter 11, verse 28, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. It doesn't say, well, this woman just said, yeah, I'll just stop sinning. I, I agree with you that I should stop sinning, because Jesus didn't say you have to do that. He just said you have to believe. And now here's where we get into eternal security. Another biblical doctrine, uh, an important point of the Bible, of the gospel, which Levi Price completely ignores and is leaving out, of, is that we are given eternal life, from the moment that we trust in Christ, and this is a gift of God that lasts forever. The Bible says in John chapter 10, verse 28, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. There's nobody who can tempt us to, let's say, if salvation was by works, as Levi Price is teaching, there's nobody, no man who can pluck us out of the Father's hand. Now, there's people out there who can tempt us to do sin. But nobody can take us out of the Father's hand, so sinning is not what causes you to lose your salvation. You can't lose your salvation. It's eternal. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30 says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. We're sealed by the Holy Spirit. Okay, there's nothing that can stop us from losing our salvation, not even sin. Paul admitted that he was a sinner. In Romans chapter 7, verse 14 to verse 25, he says, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find that a law, when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin." So he's telling us that he is carnal, or in other words, he's in the flesh. He still can commit sin. And yet, because he's born again, this is only of the flesh, of the corruptible body, and not of the spirit. 
he still sins as a unison of body and spirit as an individual, but there's a war inside of himself, the law of the members or the body, which is the law of sin and the law of the mind, which is the law of God. So no, we don't just automatically stop sinning when we get saved. The Holy Spirit of God indwells us, causes us to feel remorse for sin and to understand the sin which we commit. But as long as we have this body, okay, our body doesn't change when we get saved. As long as we have this corruptible body, this old man is still here. We still have the flesh. We still can commit sin. We as individuals cannot escape from sin. You can't just repent of it and just stop doing it all automatically. And just so you know, Wayne Levi and all these other uh, liars on YouTube, they sometimes try to say that they have turned from their sin and that they're not hypocrites because they actually obey God. And they say, well, we keep all the commandments, so therefore we're saved. And sometimes we make little mistakes, but then we just repent of that and then God will not send us to hell or whatever. But it says in James chapter 2, verse 10, For whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. And remember, Price claimed in one of his videos that he's not teaching perfection, that he doesn't think you have to absolutely obey every command. But if salvation were by works, you would need to obey every command, because the Bible says that if you offend at one point, you're guilty of all. And guess what? We will offend at one point, because it says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It says in Romans 3.10, There's not a... There's not... Or... Uh, Romans 3.10, uh, for all have, wait, no, what, what is Romans 3.10? I can't get it off the top of my head, but Ecclesiastes 7.20, how about that? Ecclesiastes 7.20 says, there's not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. First John 1.8, that says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. First John 1.8 is being written to fellow Christians. John is writing it to fellow Christians. John is just like Paul admitting that we are all sinners instead of puffing himself up with pride like these false YouTube teachers who are trying to say, now I've stopped sinning. I, I'm not in sin. I'm not of the flesh. I just stopped doing that. Well, Paul admitted it. John admitted it. He, they both said, we're, we're carnal. They both said that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Now, I want to address some of the scriptures with which uh, Wayne tries to use to support his heresy. One of them is Mark 1.15. It says, and he put this on the screen in one of his videos, says, and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Now, does that say anything about you have to stop sinning? No. It only says that, or it only says that in his mind, because he thinks that repentance always means that you have to turn from your sin. And this is just one example of several, including Matthew chapter 4, verse 17, and Luke 13, 3, which both are instances of Jesus saying that you need to repent. But remember, in Jonah chapter 3, verse 10, it says that God that God saw their saw their works that they turned from the evil ways. So turning from your work, repenting of your or turning from your evil ways, repenting of your sin is a work in God's eyes. Not only that, but it says in the same verse that God repented of the evil that he was going to do to Nineveh. So if repentance always means that you have to turn from your sin, then why does it say God repented of what he was going to do to Nineveh when God is without sin? That doesn't make any sense. Repentance just means a change, a turn. Okay, when he says, repent ye and believe the gospel, that's just changing your direction, changing your mind towards the gospel, towards belief. It's nothing to do with stopping your sinning and turning away from all your sin. He also gives Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26 to 31, as supposed evidence that one who sins will go to hell. It says, starting at verse 26, For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment, suppose ye, shall he be thought worthy, who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God, and hath counted the blood of the covenant, wherewith, wherewith he was sanctified, and a unholy thing, and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace? For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto me, I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Does this passage have anything to do with salvation? Does it say anything about salvation anywhere in the passage? No, it does not. Is salvation or hell or eternal life mentioned in all this passage? No, none of these things are mentioned. What this passage is teaching is that when we become saved, when we receive the knowledge of the truth, we can't just sacrifice an animal to cover our sin as you could in the Old Testament. That's what it explains earlier in the chapter. It says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 8 to 11, uh, uh, above when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin, thou wouldest not, neither hast pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second, by the which will 
by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. So you have to read it in context. The passage is telling us that if we're God's children, just as a godly parent would chastise his children, God would chastise us. We can't just go and sacrifice an animal and just be like, okay, well, God won't punish us anymore. No, because we're God's children. God will chastise us and curse us and discipline us so that we actually follow him. It has nothing to do with losing your salvation or going to hell. These are earthly punishments, just like the earthly punishments that are given in the law of Moses, such as putting someone to death. Putting someone to death doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to go to hell. It's just putting someone, putting someone to death on the earth. And it's no wonder, because the Bible repeatedly says over and over again, okay, it's no wonder that you can't lose your salvation. It says over and over again, our salvation is eternal. That we are saved, not that we're going to be saved by continuing to obey God until our deaths. Remember, Jesus said, I give unto them eternal life. This is in John 10. I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Then John 11, he says, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection of life. He that believeth in me, Though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? It doesn't make any sense to say he shall never die or they shall never perish if you can lose your eternal life by failing to be obedient to the commandments of God. If you lose it, it's not eternal. But he says it's eternal. It's everlasting. It says He says, if you live and believe in me, you shall never die. Now, if you go and do some wicked sin five days later and you die because of it, you lose your salvation. That's not that's not eternal. How could he promise for it to be eternal if you can lose it at some point in the future? Because you can't. And by the way, we have eternal life now. There's another false doctrine going around that says, well, we just have eternal life in the future. We just don't have it right now. But it's not some future thing. The book of 1 John says in chapter 5, verse 13, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. So it says you have eternal life. It doesn't say you will get eternal life. Ye have it. Once you believe, you have eternal life, and it is eternal. You cannot lose it. You will never die. Your spirit will live on forever. Now I want to conclude by also showing you uh, that Wayne Levi Price is a false prophet. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 20 to 22, But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. And if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if a thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. But the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. Now, Wayne Levi Price made a video back in 2014. It's called The Great Tribulation Will Begin 2017. So, I mean, you can already tell from the title that this is... You can already tell from the title where this is going to go. So, at the beginning of the video, maybe you can read, I don't know if you can read it. He says, at the end of Obama's term, 2016, the greatest Christian persecution the world has ever seen will begin. I am not trying to scare you, but to prepare you. So... Are you ready? So, uh, Wayne Levi Price made this prediction back in 2014 that the Great Tribulation is going to begin in 2017. Well, I mean, here we are two years later and the Great Tribulation hasn't begun. So what does that mean? He made a false prediction. And he's also a false gospel preacher. Uh, he's a false gospel preacher making a false prediction. That's not surprising. A lot of people do that. That happens all the time, honestly. Like Daniel John Lee, who I uh, made a video about over a month ago. So, thank you everybody for watching. I hope this sheds some light on this on this false preacher and also some other people who teach the repent of your sin uh, false doctrine, which is very dangerous. Uh, the entire idea of lordship salvation in this modern day and age is very dangerous. And uh, we need to just focus on what the Bible says. And the Bible is very clear about the gospel. I just, I mean, you watch Wayne Levi's Price videos and he rarely ever quotes the Bible. It's just him going like, God has done great things for me, and I know, and he just, like, rants on forever and ever about stuff, and he, like, he just contradicts himself, it doesn't make any sense, he just rants on forever and ever, without actually giving any scripture to support his doctrine, uh, so, 
he's a false teacher. Let's just stick with what the Bible says, and that's salvation is by faith alone, by trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ, and not by doing our own good works. So thank you, everybody, for watching, and goodbye.